Welcome back to Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass. This is Grandma Party. And I'm Cad. I'm so excited to have you here because I think you're the person who loves the game more than anyone else. I have so many feelings about this game. It has been like my hyperfixation for, um, I don't know how long now, but um, yeah, no, it's like, it's like all I think about and like I draw just so much fan art for it. A lot of it doesn't get posted too. All of the fan art I've seen so far has been amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, especially Johnny Katz, who is <laughs> just it makes me giggle every time I see it. I love that man. Okay, so we... Man, I forgot what we did last episode. Oh yeah, we did the greed, right? So we're actually gonna do some plot this time. All right. And you specifically requested this episode. Why is that? Because this part that's coming up right now is my favorite part of the game. Oh, shit. Look at my baby! He's so good! Look at his little suit! He got so grown up! I'm so proud! He's a grown-up egg now. Oh, my sweet egg man. Wait, no. No, that's a key to... Never mind. Look at Big Norm. He looks great! They are all just so amazing. I love their self-actualization in this scene. They're so good. I'm so proud of Big Norm. Excuse me, just Norman now. And Punch remembers- Okay, I, I understand why you want this scene now. I never wanted to hug a video game character before this. I know. I, I have to admit something a little bit embarrassing. I might have almost teared up at this part <laughs> back when I played through. <laughs> That's adorable. I just... I just came up to the scene and I was like, Oh, holy shit, it's all my babies. I'm kind of the same way. And I I'm so proud of Norman and I'm so proud of Johnny Knives. Dee Dee is much the same. That is true, but... She had some time to think. And... I think that's important. You know, she's being her best self. And it's so rare to have an RPG with people that do actual, like, personal growth here. And they're so good. Except for that part. I don't want her to be angry. What? <laughs> I learned the knives are stupid. That's, that's great. <laughs> I, I feel like everyone has changed the most. Um, except maybe, maybe not Johnny so much. Instead, he just found bigger knives. He has found the blade. He absolutely went into, like, a unique imports or whatever, uh, shitty anime store there is in the mall, and he saw a katana, <laughs> and he was like, holy shit, it's a big knife! Yeah. While you guys were out exploring, I was practicing the blade. Oh, and Punch is our dad now. I mean, he's not an actual dad, but he's got that good dad energy. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Okay, I'm getting a little misty here. In another episode, I compared them to the Turks, and they're so much better than the Turks were. Definitely, yeah. I, I remember you saying, like, you were a big fan of, like, characters in games who are like the Turks, I guess? Like, the the goofy gang characters or whatever, and I totally agree. Oh, totally. I just like crimes. Crimes are the coolest, and these guys are all about crime. Or maybe not anymore. I don't know, I bet they still do crimes. They're complicated. But they do good crimes, that's what they do. Are there any good crimes? Uh... Oh, you, please hug Johnny. Oh, I'm calling that a hug. Yeah, it's a, the walkthrough Punch Tanaka hug. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> if you walk through someone in a video game, you're hugging. Doesn't matter who. I've seen a couple of Let's Plays where um they had Jimmy in uh, his pumpkin form. So it was just like, oh, okay, that's appropriate. They're just walking through him. No, it's way better with him as a goon right now. 
I feel punched so big right here. I got a little little tear up. But then the problem is the rest of the dungeon has got some issues. What are your feelings on Hitomi? Hitomi, um I never really got into her as a character. Um in combat I found her useful, but other than that, just like as a character, I wasn't really into her. I agree with you. Real quick, uh, the tiny robot, she will explode if she builds up the courage to do so, so take her out quick, and the rest we've pretty much seen in here. There's not a whole bunch of new stuff. You know, I think Hitomi's just a little one-dimensional. Yeah, I, I do think that was also like on purpose as well, probably. I agree, but I really don't want to watch Lars flirt. I don't want to think about Lars flirting. Wait, you do want to think about Lars flirting, or you don't want to think about Lars flirting? No, I, couldn't I, agree. I don't. You know, it's... If only he had a fedora. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You could see it, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm envisioning it. Now I'm thinking about your sexy Lars picture. Oh man, that is one spicy man. Woof. No, no, I'm taking that wolf back. Wolfs are only for dads. <laughs> I'm just saying. Lars looked high as shit in that picture, and I think that's the best part. Oh, absolutely. And it was just giving me such a great American Beauty vibe. That's good. I think we can all aspire to be someone laying on the floor covered in chips and video games. Oh, I know how I'm torturing Catherine tonight. Oh, I forgot about Gero. Gero's in here. Nothing good's gonna happen from Gero. We're gonna steal his costume. Oh boy. I did not do that my first time around, and then I found out what happens when you do it, and um... I don't like it. I It's not good. That is nasty. Mm-mm. Garo's got some stuff going on, man. I mean, good for him. He's taking care of whatever issues Garo has, but... Mm-mm. Cover that up. Yeah, that's... That's not good. Oh, boy, chat. Oh, I don't I'm... like this, Lars, either. Mm-mm. I do not like these Tales-style skits. But I do like this portrait of Hitomi better than the last one, the Vigil novel, but man, this Lars portrait's awful. Yeah, these portraits are really something. And I like the skit portion of it, but man, if it could be any two other characters, I wish we had Helga here. That would be great. I would, I would love to see what Helga would have to say. I would love her in the visual novel portion, and I would love her in this portion. Because everything she's said so far, I love, and I think she's probably the deepest character. Oh, Helga, definitely. Oh, definite crime time. Do it. Do, Do it, it, Grandma. It. Commit those crimes. Do it. Hell yeah. Secondary crime. Pick his pockets. Steal the vending machine. Not as good a crime. But we're still there. Okay, so I know one of your hobbies is to make up headcanon for these characters. Tell me tell me some headcanon for Helga. For Helga? Um You're gonna be my JK Rowling here. Oh no. Um Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to think about this, because Helga's one of the characters I haven't really, uh, made any headcanons for, and the only, like, big one I have, I... I don't think I can talk about right now. I would have to wait till you're later in the game. Okay. We'll put a pin in it and come back. I really hope it's not the pulsating mask, because that thing freaks me out. Nah, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Mm, I agree with you. Thank you. 
So what are you playing right now? Um, right now, I have just been playing World of Warcraft. I have just uh, gotten back home in Oregon after spending a bunch of time in California. So I'm just I'm just relaxing. Like, okay, I can play WoW, and do nothing else. Oh, nice. What were you doing in California? Um, I was working as a legal assistant for my dad because he had a bunch of uh, cases and trials coming up and he needed someone to help him sort paperwork and uh, deal with stuff in the actual trials. Oh man, did you get to see the courtroom drama? Oh yeah, yeah. I was um, responsible for displaying uh, exhibits on the screen and stuff like that. Oh my god, was it a jury trial? Yeah, I, we were on plaintiff side both times, and speaking of displaying exhibits, there was a... It, it kind of got a little bit uh, weird in there once, because I ended up helping the defendants at one point, and the lawyer on the defendant's side got really mad at me when her uh, <laughs> her computer wouldn't turn on. And like she like almost like shouted over me, and I was just like, you have to press the button to turn it on. Oh my god. Yeah, it it got pretty wild in there. I didn't expect I didn't expect uh, to get almost yelled at by another attorney. How'd y'all end up doing? Um, bad. Oh, that sucks. Oh yeah, definitely. Cause you go, I did all that work, and they they reward us with how much? Yeah. I hate singing for my supper like that. Just be like, give me a hundred thousand dollars, please. Yeah, I know. Like I did two trials and like the the first one was uh bad for um reasons. And the other one was bad because our client was it, it not not very smart, let's just put it that way. Oh man. I'm so sorry. Oh, Punch! God, look at him. Look at those sideburns. Look at how big his neck is. Punch is so strong. A thick neck is a good thing. I've been watching Letter Kenny and I can't stop staring at that guy's neck. So thick. It's like Punch Tanaka thick. Although I'm not liking this cartoon shaming. There is no world in which Lars is cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so I do some personal injury work, but I'm also a really shysty divorce lawyer. And I'll do things that you really shouldn't do if I'm mad and I'm not getting paid enough. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, last week I got in a bunch of trouble. Because uh -oh. one of my first clients is... Basically, their English is a second language, and they became a lawyer, and they're terrible at divorce work. And they got in a boatload of trouble, and they said, Grandma, please help me. Like, get me out of all this trouble. Take over this case. This client will eventually pay you. And the problem is, I hate the client. I loathe every ounce of his body. He's the worst. I don't like him. He doesn't have any money. Oh, man. So we're doing a trial, and I have get him up there he testifies i go is there anything else you want to say and he goes no i'm good and then his wife starts testifying and his wife is going just a bunch of crazy bullshit and his wife is talking about all the things that she can't prove that he's done and he goes i want to say something and we're on the record right people writing this all down he goes i want to say oh, something boy. i go no she keeps talking he goes i want to say something i go no he slams the table and says, I want to say something. And I look at him and I go, then fire me already. And the judge laughs and he stares at me and he goes, okay. And the judge goes, oh, we're not going to fire you. You're in trial. Ah, damn it. I got to edit that part out. <laughs> Shit. That's fun. I can do that. It's a bad look for the client. Yeah, no, um, our, uh, the last trial I did, um, he got up on the stand and they were talking about something regarding hiring a lawyer. 
And then right before he leaves, he was also like, oh, I, I just want to say one more thing. And then he's like, I have a confession to make. I lied. And what? everyone's like, what? And like, I look at my dad and he looks at me and we're just like, uh, what? <laughs> and then he, he like repeats that I lied thing like five more times. And like, there was, I don't know, like the air just like got really cold in the courtroom. It's already cold in there. And everyone's like, what? what is this guy doing? Oh my god. The people are wild. Oh no, it's absolutely crazy. Are you doing like trials to a judge or trials to a jury? Um, I'm not really sure what that means, but there is a jury and a judge, so... Oh man, jury trials are nuts. So like, judges don't want any theatrics, but juries love theatrics. Oh, I bet. Real quick, we're doing... This is a puzzle. He doesn't know the level 3 code. Like, the Yang brother is useless. I like this puzzle. I do too. Oh, no thoughts. I do like this part. It was pretty ingenious. Oh, hell yes. And then I thought about it. Oh, I can't. Damn, I forgot I did that. Well then. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what it is, but just like getting like a little trash can to just like interact with like other things in the environment. I don't know, just like those little tiny things I, I enjoy. I don't approve of fire crimes. Oh no, we're Jimmy. We're doing fire crimes. Mm -mm. California got a lot of problem with fire crimes. <laughs> oh, I know all about those fire crimes. Did you start the fire? No, but I had to escape the wildfire in November, like, twice. It was terrible. I I think you know a little bit too much about this fire. I'm squinting real hard <laughs> right now. Yeah, no, I was, uh... We were, like, right behind the the hills, like, not too far from the Woolsey fire, and that was, that was not good. Mm-mm. Respect to Tommy. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, moonworm. Whatever. Moon worm. It's not a big deal. One of the two of you is lying. I don't think Punch Tanaka lies. Punch Tanaka knows more about moonworms than Hitomi. I think Punch Tanaka's had all sorts of worms. What happens if you eat from the garbage? <laughs> yeah, see? Doesn't even need it. The Yang triplets are kind of weird. Like, they're only here and they try to give them identity, but we really don't spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't remember. I I have to admit, I don't remember a whole lot in this building. I think, like, I played this twice, and every time I come here, I just try to get through this building as quick as possible. Because despite, like, the part right before it being, like, my favorite scene, I cannot stand this building. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the Lars Hitomi getting to know you stage. It's definitely awkward. It's super awkward. And I keep waffling between whether or not he intentionally made it that way, or it just ended up that way. You know, I'm pretty sure it was intentional. Yeah, he does have the right- Casey does have the writing chops to intentionally do this. Oh yeah. But then the question is why? To make us suffer, probably. <laughs> no, the suffering is later. You know when we're going to suffer. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, Girl Yang is a terrible nickname. I'll bet you 50 bucks the original name was Wang. I... I don't have a comment for that. <laughs> I don't trust you, Girl Wang. I don't trust you, and I don't trust how easily you gave me your code. Mm-hmm. Thank you. 
Is this another crime? No, this is black. This is extortion. Wait, I thought that's a crime. I'm not on trial here. Am I? Uh... I don't know. Damn. Yeah, I'm just... Man, I'm trying to think of another lawyer story for you, because it's super fun, just because of all the crap that happens. Like, what your dad does, they really prep for, but family court, you just kind of go in off the cuff. Like, it's half the times I'll go in with a file, and it's somebody else's file, but I just need something to carry under my arm to look important. I see. Don't tell any of my clients. Your secret's safe with me, Grandma? Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, court is like wild. And then I have to do like jury duty at the end of the month. Maybe they'll let me go because I'll tell them like, oh, I was an assistant to a lawyer and they'll be like, oh, get the hell out of here. Oh, man, you should absolutely do that. It's so much better than actually doing jury duty. I got jury duty for a personal injury case and I do some personal injury law and I walked in and they're like, does anyone know anyone here? I'm like, yeah, I know you judge. And I know the lawyer who's the plaintiff site lawyer. And he's the guy who used to watch try cases to learn how to do it because he's really good. And the guy's eyes just light up. And so what we proceeded to do was poison the jury pit to the best of our ability. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. So he would ask a question and he'd put and I'd raise my hand and he'd point at me and I'd give him the exact answer he wanted. And so at the end of the day, the, the defense lawyer threw a fit and they had to try the case anyway. And they gave this guy $500,000 for falling off a ladder. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh shit, things are happening. Okay, look, I know what Buck's going for, but every time I see that animation, I think that he's pulling on strings to make his wings flap. That is what it looks like. He also looks like he's like flexing and like flapping his wings and it's just really silly looking. He's totally flexing. He flexing all the time. I'm still trying to figure out why he wanted to give in to the pulsating mass. Jimmy seems like a nice boy. What a dick. So I'm going to be honest with you, I'm very over leveled at this point in the game. And a lot of people find this fight difficult. Not so much for us. That's probably for the best. I think I did this fight under leveled and it did not go well. I love that animation though, that's amazing. Oh, fun fact about that animation. I think Casey said that animation was originally going to have a, um, like a, a voiceover, and then uh, he didn't he didn't add it. I I think that might have been the right spell. I'm not 100% sure. Pretty sure that is the one though. Oh, it should have totally had a voiceover. It'd been perfect. Be great. Yeah, a lot of people find this fight to be a roadblock, but I think we're about seven levels higher than where we should be. But. It's it's a trade-off between how much how long do y'all want to see me in a fight versus how long do y'all want to advance the plot. Oh, that is that is true. I think the only real roadblock I ran into, besides like being underleveled for a few things, was uh, principal pulsating mass. That took forever. Yeah, I liked my YOLO strategy. To just attack it, everything at once. I don't care if it reflects, we'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I had to remember for a second what you did. Oh, no. I just did, like, all the group attacks. I'm like, this is going to reflect on me, but whatever. I mean, you're, you're leveled high enough. It's all good. I've been watching some of the streamers, and these fights take a long time. Oh, yeah. The problem is, if you notice his health is getting pretty low, we don't go into the second phase. He dies. <laughs> so normally Buck will take off and fly, and you can 
he can't hit him with physical attacks anymore. Oh yeah, interestingly enough, he never went into the second phase for me the first time I did it, and I didn't know why, because I got his health low enough, but he just kind of stood there. You know what, I respect a man who stands by its principles, or a lady who stands by hers. And I guess he's just too stupid to fly. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah, we are very high level. You know, it, it will help you out later on, for sure. I mean, we're gonna have to grind anyway. There's more than strength, Buck. Just because you're swole, you can't crush everything forever. That's what Mr. Grouse was trying to teach us. Bye! Hi, Scabs. I think this, this right here is another favorite part. Oh my god, this part is great. What? When have y'all been talking? Scabs is a good cat. When have they been talking? Like, we had three conversations. It's been 26 minutes. Uh, actually, I know people in real life like this. Oh god, I know, right? Have you ever seen the show 90 Day Fiance? No, I haven't. Oh, it's my guilty... What? God, what the I fuck? Thought... <laughs> I absolutely love that part. Where were you keeping this ladder to the moon? Also, what? So, when I played this game the first time, I did not read the Steam description. I did not know this was a dream. So I absolutely lost my mind and i just just completely lost it at like large just having this giant ladder out of nowhere yeah and he's like goodbye forever and yet i'm like you have this ladder mom's back i'm so happy god i love her and she's just so blase about things This is what I imagine Rue McClanahan was like before she was a golden girl. Excuse me, Blanche Devereaux was like before she was 60. I like how Helga basically just comes out of there and is like, oh, is Buck done yet? Hi, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, I missed you. And apparently everyone hits on her and she just blushes and says she's a married woman. I love her to death for it. Yay! I missed her. I'll miss Lars, though. Hitomi can stay on the moon. Goodbye, Hitomi. Kat, thanks so much for joining me. I had a blast.